It's time for another edition of Cowboys Insider inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios at the Star in Frisco, Texas, home of your Dallas Cowboys. I'm Bill Jones along with Nate Newton, Rick Goslin, and Daryl Johnson as it's time to break down Cowboys versus Kansas City Chiefs on Sunday at AT&T Stadium and look back at a Cowboys win over the Redskins on Sunday, their second straight win. And oh yes, there's been a bit of news around here as well this week as of course the Zeke Elliott decision has come down. A six game suspension set to start. We'll get into Zeke in just a moment, but as usual, we kick it off with the opening statements from our analyst here, starting with the moose. Well, it, it sounds like Jason Garrett listened to Rick Oslin last week and they <laughs> decided to just run the ball. So uh, I, I think some people are making a little bit out of the injuries with the offensive line of the Washington Redskins and maybe not giving the Dallas Cowboys defense the credit they deserve. But the other thing is that's a pretty good defensive front and almost 200 yards per game in the last four weeks out. Great job by the by the offense. You know, I just believe this that you what you won two games you should have won and I'm with Moose, you know, it, that was overrated playing into the offensive line. Our defensive line is starting to find some traction as long as they can stop the run game and let's see can they continue to do it this week against Kansas City. Well, it's good to find some traction because these next three weeks they're going to need all the traction they can get, especially with Zeke Elliott going. <laughs> yes, and it starts with Kansas City, of course, on Sunday, and then they travel to Atlanta, and then Philadelphia comes here. And, oh, by the way, four days later the Chargers come here. But uh, let's let's talk about the Redskins first, then we'll get into Zeke. The run game in those conditions, it was very important. Of course, Elliott ran the ball 33 times in that game. Yeah, but the big thing for me is, is his longest run was only 14 yards, so it was a methodical running game in conditions that the defense – knows you need to run the passing game is going to be impacted so they're looking for the running game so I think this offensive line Nate's talked about it the last couple of weeks how this offensive line is really starting to come together and hit its stride you, you just can't uh, go into a game with the penalties we had early you know but I think Jason went in at halftime settled of these guys down and say hey this is our man we listening to Rick we're gonna give it to him 30 times they rock and roll yeah, this is the identity of the Cowboys. They're a run-first team that feeds off play-action pass, and whether Elliott's there or not, the identity cannot change. You've got a couple backs that are capable of rushing, not giving you the big plays Elliott can, but this is your identity. Stick with it. And, of course, as Daryl alluded to, there were injuries on that Redskin offensive line, but this is a trend now that the Cowboys have had uh, pretty much all season where they've been building and building, able to pressure the quarterback to Marcus Lawrence with another sack this week. Yeah, and, and getting David Irving inside, I think, helps, too. Uh, you know, you're seeing that around the league. Some of these tackles aren't the prototypical tackle that we used to see. The the six foot three, six foot four, 310 pound guy. We're getting some length uh, and some tall, lean guys in there, and uh, he obviously fits that role. So a little bit of speed inside on guard center, guard pass protection. Yes, and Tyrone Crawford is, is finally healthy, and he's starting to play a little bit better. So I'm looking for some special things, man. It's just gonna be a good game as long as we keep the penalties out. Now, if you get Malik Collins going like these other yes. guys, then you really yes. got something going. <laughs> and Goose, you're a guy who monitors special teams. You put out a ranking every year of the special teams in the league. Special teams was big in this game. Uh, you can't say enough about the blocked field goal and the return by Skandrick. Yeah, it, any kind of blocked field goal, um, to defensive turn at all impacts. If you force a turnover, get get uh, score a special teams touchdown or score a defense touchdown, the chance of you winning just skyrockets. You're, you're about a 70% chance of winning if you do these things. And right now the Cowboys are doing those things. All right, uh, let's get into Zeke a little bit and uh, and how the team now copes without Ezekiel Elliott for the next uh, six games. How do you think they're set at the running back now? Obviously, you got McFadden, Morris, and Rod Smith. No, I, I think the biggest thing Rick said is you have an identity, the, the way the Cowboys function, and you can't move away from that identity even though Ezekiel is not with you anymore. But I'm a huge Alfred Morris fan. When they signed him before Ezekiel came here, I thought it was a really good signing. So they've got the people. The one thing they won't have, though, is the passion that feed me when he gets going. Everybody kind of, you know, buys into that. So I think that that's going to be the biggest thing that they're trying to replace is that emotion. Is Zeke-less, but we won't be eat-less. We yeah. got to feed the ball, man. That's about, I like that move, man. But Rod Smith, I think he's he he is that guy. He's that diamond in the rough that you wait on. I like Mars, and I don't know where McFadden fit in. There. I just don't. I just don't think you can come off the wood for and, and just and be that effective. Now I, I've never played running back, so Moose, maybe you would know. I was a fullback. I don't know. I, don't, I, don't know. I can't talk on that. No, I think we're going to find out. I think we now have a running back in my committee, and they're going to go with the hot hand whether it's Smith or Morris or McFadden, whichever guy has the best success, they're going to ride him. There's definitely a hot hand coming into AT&T Stadium on Sunday. The Kansas City Chiefs, one of the best teams in all of football, the first half of the season. And we preview that when Cowboys Insider continues in a moment. 
Cowboys Insider, presented by Baylor Scott and White, is brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors, the official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys, AT&T, mobilizing your world, and by Baylor Scott and White. We're changing health care for life. This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. Can Dallas get him off the field? Cousins back. Rush. Fumble the ball as he was hit. Scramble for the ball at midfield. Who's got it? Dallas. Tyrone Crawford not only with his strip sack, but also named the NFC Special Teams Player of the Week after that blocked field goal against the Redskins. Welcome back to Cowboys Insider inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios here at the Star. Let's talk about these Kansas City Chiefs who come in here with a 6-2 record, a win on Monday night over the Denver Broncos. They've got the number one rated passer in the league. They've got the number one rusher in the league. They are rolling right now, Daryl. Yeah, everybody talks about Philadelphia as being the best team in the NFL. And you can't look past Kansas City. Kansas City's five days away from being the best team in the NFL. They had five bad days with a Pittsburgh loss on Sunday and a loss to the Oakland Raiders on Thursday night. We remember that game, that crazy game at the end. So this is a very, very talented football team in all three phases. It's Kelsey, Tariq Hill, and the kid Kareem Hunt. They run multiple fronts. Uh, Coach just does a whole lot of injuries, does a whole lot of crazy things. But understand this right here, that those three guys getting the ball. So you better strap it on because the Chiefs are one of the four best teams in football, and they played the other three. They've beaten the Patriots, they've beaten the Eagles, and they gave Steelers a, a very close game. This is a very good football team, a very complete football team. They don't rank high defensively, but they turn the ball over and they sack the quarterback. And uh, how about Kareem Hunt, third-round draft pick out of uh, Toledo and uh, – Transition to the NFL, no problem for this guy. I mean, he leads the league in rushing and starting from day one, uh, you can see the explosion and uh, playmaking ability. Yeah, he's he's the complete package. Uh, you know, everybody talks about Ezekiel Elliott and the, the complete package at running back. Uh, you know, he adds speed at the running back position, and, and I agree with Nate Tyreek Hill. There's unique speed on this team, so the big play is always a threat, but I'm always impressed with the physicality that Kareem Hunt plays with. There, there's some sloppy runs in there where it's second and five, and you wonder how they got five yards on it. He's very patient for a rookie. I mean, I look at him week in, week out. He's very patient, man. And then all of a sudden you say, man, he's not going to do it this game. All of a sudden he just breaks a, a long run. How did this guy slide to the third round? <laughs> but I give it the Chiefs credit. They traded up to get him. They saw something they liked in Kareem Hunt and traded up to get him. But, I mean, how does the Dak Prescott go in the fourth? How's the Tom Brady go in the sixth? We need better scouts in this league. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got a Gronk-like tight end, Travis Kelsey, playing very well. In fact, he just had his third 100-yard uh, game of the season on Monday night. Yeah, it could be one of those matchup issues at the tight end position. And, and also we talk about Ezekiel and the passion that he plays with in the game and how it kind of becomes infectious on the team. Travis Kelsey, very similar uh, in that style as well. So the safety tight end matchup this week will be big. You can hit him in the mouth. Make him mad. Make him act up. Hit him in the mouth. Uh, he, he's because he has a tendency. When you, not, he, yeah. Yeah. Once you get him jabbering, he, he go over the top. Hit him in the mouth. <laughs> Byron Jones scored a touchdown last week. He's going to need to play better this week against Kelsey to get past the Chiefs. All right, what about the Chiefs' defense? Because uh, you look at the statistics, they're 30th in the league in defense, but they can bring it off the edge, especially with Justin Houston. Yeah, I like Justin Houston. I like Chris Jones inside. Chris Jones is another one of those big bodies, a six foot six guy that's down inside, 310 pounds. Uh, you know, that's going to be a tough matchup inside. Uh, they've got good secondary players. Um, you know, it, this is a good team. Statistically, they don't rank well, but uh, like Rick said, you know, they get after the quarterback, they take the ball away from you. So they do the things that you need to do. Maybe the yardage isn't there, but in certain situational areas, they're a very good defense. You can score on them in the red zone. When you get into the red zone, you can score. You can, you can make hay. Don't turn the ball over, and you, you will be just fine against this group. Speaking of don't turn the ball over, that is not what the Chiefs do. The Chiefs fumbled on the first play of the season, Kareem Hunt. And then Alex Smith had a strip sack last week, and that was the, they've had two giveaways wow. all season. They do not beat themselves. You have to beat the Kansas City Chiefs because they're not going to beat themselves. A very well-coached team as well. All right, we uh, have more on the Chiefs coming up. Coming up next year on Cowboys Insider, life after Ezekiel Elliott. Who needs to step up now for the Cowboys with Zeke out the next six weeks? 
This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. You're home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. This segment is brought to you by DraftKings. Play for free today at DraftKings.com, America's favorite one-week fantasy football site. Is pelting now. And I don't know if you come back with this, but Dak Prescott could have walked the dog on that last one. Hand off Elliott, pushing on the right side. He'll walk it in. Touchdown, Cowboys. Elliott's second of the game for the second week in a row. Cowboys have relied on Ezekiel Elliott in a very big way the last couple of weeks to the point that uh, Zeke ranks right up there as the number one scorer in the league tied for that in the NFL rankings as we approach the midway portion of this season here on Cowboys Insider inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios. As we told you at the top of the show, of course, life goes on now without Ezekiel, Ezekiel Elliott for the next uh, six weeks. Daryl, how much of a distraction from a player's standpoint do you think the whole Zeke thing has been the first half of the season? It has to have an impact. You can't say that there was no impact on that locker room. Uh, and, and we always try to minimize the distractions that you have. And, and when they're self-inflicted like they were with this situation, it, it makes it even more challenging. So uh, you know you're going to have adversity during the course of the year with injuries and different things like that. But anything that's within your control you don't want to have. And that's what this has been. And as it's gone back and forth and gotten confusing, uh, you know, people continue to talk about it. So you can say all you want that it didn't have an impact on the locker room, but we've been through oh, yeah. situations that were within our control that we didn't make good decisions with, and it impacted our locker room. You know, I'm glad we got our offensive line situation fixed. So we know who our left guard is, and that's Jonathan Cooper. We can roll now. We can find the best running back, like Rick said, we find the hot hand, and let's go because Jason Garrett will have to do some of his best coaching here. And you cannot minimize this loss. I mean, this is the best player on this team. And last year I voted him the best player in the league. You don't lose your best player and not feel it. And you'll feel it in this locker room. A lot of guys are going to have to step up, starting with Dak Prescott. And, and we talked about at the end of last year who should be the rookie of the year last year. And what, what effect does uh, Zeke's presence on the field have on a defensive coordinator in game planning? Well, it, it really frees you up if, if Alfred and Rod and the other guys don't force you to bring that extra guy down into the box. Now, you can you can kind of sag back. It makes things more difficult for, for Jason Witten, for Des Bryant, for the passing game. Uh, and it's a huge it's a huge thing. And there's, there's guys around the league when we sit down with a coordinator. Sometimes it's the wide receiver on the outside that gives him fits all week long trying to prepare for that. This is the other side. This is the guy in the backfield that's giving him fits all week long because he's got to figure out how to manage, you know, keeping a, a box that they're going to be able to stop the run without being too too soft in the secondary. Let me ask you, Nate, uh, from an offensive lineman's perspective, you're accustomed having Ezekiel Elliott uh, behind you. What effect does it have with different running backs, a running back by committee with offensive line? We run in a groove, and Moose would say, we run as a groove. You know, we, we five guys moving as a groove, and, and Moose was a fullback. He moved with us. Uh, what Zeke gave you was you own your block, and all of a sudden you look up and you go into the house. You know, other than that, we, we try to keep our same groove and our same move. Now, they may adjust depending on who the running back is, some of the play calling, but we move in the groove and what makes us feel good is like what makes Zeke and this group feel good is when you look up, he's in the end zone. If we need a third and one, you don't even worry about it. It's money in the bank. And that's what's going to be missing. That's what uh, every defense coordinator will have a sigh of relief because what you're losing now is the 73-yard big play. The, the, he was the guy who could anywhere in the field. He can go 97, he can go 75, whatever. That pass against San Francisco, what, 70, 72-yard touchdown pass. He could take it to house from anywhere in the field, and I think that element is now gone, and that makes the life a little easier for the defenses and defensive coordinators. But, but wait a second, Alfred Morris went 70 yards one time this season. He didn't, but he didn't, he didn't, he didn't get it in. He didn't get it in, so, him. bro. You don't have that yeah. closing speed like the one guy who's sitting. <laughs> How about Rod Smith, though? I mean, he's sort of a wild card in it, but he has proven to be so versatile in his impact on special teams. I want to see more of him. Yeah. I, I really like what I saw in, in uh, training camp and in the preseason. And I, I want to see more of, of Smith. I think it's going to be interesting which these three guys steps forward. The third and fourth teams during training camp, that's when I fell in love with him. When he was in the game with the third and fourth team, offensive line, and he was making runs, he was making cuts, uh, I think he's special in, in, in the little bit of package they can put him in because he is a special teams guy. Moose know about that. It's hard to get off special teams. Yeah, they're going to need to find somebody to kind of give him a little bit of a break there. If all of a sudden he becomes the hot hand, you got to have somebody slide into his special teams role because that's yeah. tough duty to do uh, all four a core fresh, uh, 
for special teams and then jump in and be the ball. If he becomes the guy, they'll find him for yeah. place. <laughs> <I'm telling you. laughs> All right, we continue on Cowboys Insider with a trip around the league. How about the trades this past week? And yeah, Jay Ajayi, now a Philadelphia Eagle. This segment was brought to you by DraftKings. Play for free today at DraftKings.com, America's favorite one-week fantasy football site. 34 seconds left in the game. Second down. Snap is back. Cousins' ball is tipped and intercepted at the 20-yard line by Ron Jones. Left to the five. Touchdown, Maraschino Cherry. What a way to close out the win over the Redskins. Cowboys need more of that this week against the Chiefs. A very difficult team to do that against. Welcome back to Cowboys Insider. We're in the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios here at the Star, and it's time to go around the league. The trade deadline was on Tuesday, one trade affecting the NFC East. How about the Philadelphia Eagles picking up Jay Ajayi, the running back from the Miami Dolphins. Jay Ajayi from right here in Frisco, Texas, went to Liberty High School, and not sure where the, he's going to fit in with the Eagles, but they are stocking themselves at running back. They sure are. It was, it was a running back group that I thought was pretty strong to begin with, with Smallwood and uh, LeGarrette Blunt, and I, I, I really like Corey Clement. I think, I think he's a good changeup with that group. So now that, that's a tough running back group. Uh, yeah, Philadelphia's run game just got a little bit stronger. The, that, the, he's the workhorse, though. He, he's, all these other guys are just fit guys to me. He, Jay, uh, Jai or whatever his name, this <laughs> dude is a workhorse. He had like two or three uh, over 200-yard uh, games last year. He's a, he's a beast. Yeah, he had two 200-yard games last year. You, yeah. A lot of running backs don't have one in their career. He had two. Right. See, no, this, this is going to complicate matters for defense coordinators in the NFC East. And, and when uh, you look at Ajayi, though, he kind of got in the doghouse apparently with Adam Gaze in, in Miami, has some knee issues as well. We'll see how long he is able to play in the league, but for the Eagles, he should help right away. How about the Saints and what they're doing on defense right now? They're second in the league on defense. Dennis Allen has, uh, has the group playing really well. And, and, you know, sometimes injuries will help in the long term. So last season, they got really beat up in the secondary. So they had a lot of young guys playing right away. And, and this is a defense that's – been playing, you know, very exotic styles for a number of seasons if they've gotten really poor defensive statistics. This is a simple system. It relies on the athletic ability and, and what these guys bring to the table. So I think you're finally starting to see the potential of some of these guys on this Saints defense has been there all along. Any system you put in after Rob Ryan is going to be <laughs> <a> simple. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's good. One. Wow. I, I, you know, I haven't been paying attention to the Saints. All I, all I know is they popped up five and two or five and three, whatever they record. They, 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 they rolling. They are rolling. I think part of the defensive resurgence has been a shift in offensive philosophy. Uh, Drew Brees is not throwing the ball 40 times a game now. Now they're leaning heavily on Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara to run the football. And like the Cowboys last year, if you're running the ball, you're keeping your defense off the field. And the less your defense plays, the better it plays. I think that's the case with the Saints. They're taking the ball a lot out of Brees' hands, giving it to the running backs, and that's helping both Brees and the defense. Had one of the best games of the year that you didn't see last week because it was on at the same time the Cowboy game was on. It was the Texans and the Seahawks. Deshaun Watson went off. He, I can give him the Rookie of the Year award already with four touchdowns passes but Russell Wilson matches him in fact surpassed him uh, pass for pass because they won the game uh, Russell Wilson is playing very well and now Dwayne Brown is protecting his backside yeah Seattle's loading up they're getting ready to make a run and this is a, you see the score of this game and these are two good defenses I mean Seattle's defense and Houston's defense when I saw the score I'm like gosh I can't wait to see what happened in this game and it it was just big play after big play after big play uh, one of the more entertaining games you would have seen this season if you had an opportunity to watch it you know, I, I put Seattle's offensive line right in front of uh, the New York Giants. No. Unexistent. <laughs> but uh, with, it, with the trade, with this getting Dwayne, I think it, it, it patches up things. When you have a good left tackle, a uh, decent center, it just patches up the whole offensive line. And I think we look at these two quarterbacks, I think we're seeing the flaw in the scouting process. What they missed on both Wilson and Deshaun Watson was the intangibles. There, there's magic with these guys. Do you go out and beat Alabama in a national title game against a defense later with number one draft picks? There's something special about him. And I think we saw that special last week with and both think, these quarterbacks. I think they missed it on Dak Prescott as well. Oh, yeah. but, uh, the Cowboys are very happy he is here. All right. The keys to a Cowboys victory over Kareem Hunt, Alex Smith, and the Chiefs when we come back. Cowboys Insider, presented by Baylor Scott and White, was brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. 
Rico's. Make every game a home game with Rico's. Baylor Scott and White. It's easy to find the right doctor right now at BaylorScottandWhite.com and by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' films and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. Cowboys going for their third straight win against the Kansas City Chiefs Sunday at AT&T Stadium. How about some keys to a Cowboys victory? Let's start with Daryl. I'm going to go off the grid a little bit here and say whoever wins special teams wins this game. Rich Bisaccia, Dave Tobe, two of the better special teams coaches in the league. I just think turnovers going to get it. If you can get a turnover that's rare against against this team here and turn it into seven, I think that helps. Stop Kareem Hunt. Make Alex Smith beat you. All right. Simple as that. It's not that simple, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is very difficult against the Chiefs team that comes in here at 6-2 and two, and the difficult stretch of the season here. It's the Chiefs this week. It's the Falcons next week. And then it's the Eagles. We appreciate you joining us here on Cowboys Insider, and we'll see you again next week.